Thank you. That's the law. Besides that, we all know how the cops framed you, and we want to tell you that we believe in you more than ever. Thanks, Buck. To show you how I feel about it, I'm going to see that you get a good job. how much it helps me. I want you to meet Billy Morgan, the boy broker. He disposes of bonds well. I got something for you. Can you write down your address and I'll show you a swell trick? Let him go ahead. Maybe he'll lay a leg. He's all right. Houdini. Well, what's the trick? That was it. I wanted to find out where you reside. <laughs> oh, and it lives. Can't you Thank you. 
He's in there. He's giving me another chance to ask you to marry me. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't we be married, John? We'll have a little back in the block. Now if I turn around, we'll be married in the park. No, well, tell me why. Well, I've had enough of being a policeman's daughter, and I don't want to be another policeman's wife. Well, now, what's the matter with policemen? They're man hunters. They're cruel and merciless. They're always hunting some poor devil and sending him to jail. And they think themselves great heroes. Well, we've got to uphold the law. Law? Is they degreeing, bulldozing people into confessing crimes they didn't commit? Is that law? No, but... Oh, I don't understand. No. Of course you don't. You're a policeman, and you'll never understand. I understand. Perhaps if you weren't a policeman, Tommy. Oh. Maybe, maybe I could resign. Please, Tommy. I met Chick Williams today. Oh, that's why you turned down the best detective sergeant on the force. Is it? I suppose if Tommy had a burglar's kit instead of a shield, you'd fall into his arms. And then if he croaked some guy and stick up a bank, you'd hang on his neck and kiss him to death. No, Father. But if I could help people when they get out of jail, they would sort of swear things for your putting them in, wouldn't it? So you think you'll start in by helping that dirty crook Williams, eh? If I can help him make good, to find a place for himself, I'm certainly going to do it. Are you listening to me? You keep away from that rat and hook up with Tommy or I'm through with you. Do you understand?
you two, all of you. Get him up. Get him up. Now, come on. Get over there with the rest of them now. You often come right up. Come in, Danny. Let's have your hat. You know Danny McGann, don't you, Pete? Sure, I do. How are you, Mr. Manny? Fine. They tell me you know more crooks than any detective on the force. <laughs> Maybe I missed my vocation. Don't you believe it, boy? There's nothing better than being a good detective. Gee, that's what I want to be, Mr. Manning. He has a line on the outfit that robbed the warehouse. He shot O'Brien. You have? Yes, sir. Good. Let's go into my room. You coming, Tommy? Oh, I'll be with you in a minute, Pete. I guess it. I'll pack my bag and be right down. You know, I think Backman and his gang are mixed up in this. Yeah? Say, Chick Williams is one of that gang, ain't he? Yeah, I think he is. I know he is. Listen, Backman is just a fence. I'll show you. He wouldn't kill anybody. He's handled more stolen goods. Oh, hello, Joan. Who's in there? Our pal of mine from the homicide squad. We're working on the O'Brien case. Joan. I've been thinking over what you said just to me. And right or wrong, you're more to me than anything else in the world. And always have been, ever since we were kids together. And if you're against my being on the police force, well, as soon as I get the rat that shot O'Brien, I'll quit. I'm afraid it's too late, Tommy. Are you in love with Dick Williams, Joan? Yes. And I'm going through for him. Well, it looks like we'd hook up Williams with the O'Brien killing. Yes. Yes, sir. 
I heard what you said, Dad. And I can prove that you can't stand Chick for that. Now, you keep out of this. This is a police affair. I'm going to make it my affair. Well, everything's set, Tommy. I'll phone you through our plan of the Vincent Hotel. Why, how do you do? Well, I didn't know you knew Danny McGann, Joan. Yes, I know him. But it's Billy Morgan, the boy broker. And I'm sure my friends will be glad to know that he's a copper. Ask the lady, Miss Thomas, to come up, please. Back with you. Joan. If you keep off that thing, you can let him come up. Why did you like it? Then he is this one. Come in, Daisy. Don't get sore. Because I very seldom take a drink. I hope you'll let me call and see Miss Joan again. Well, if it isn't old Diamond Daisy. Where are you going with her? Miss Thomas has invited me to spend the weekend at a roof bungalow on the Trent building. You're not going with this woman or her kind anywhere, understand? You and Backman keep away from my daughter. Father, please don't insult my friend. No. Oh, that's all right. I've been insulted by experts before I met the police department. Now, you get out of here and tell Backman what I said. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I resent the way you talk to a lady. Especially when a lady's a friend of mine. Now listen here. This is a private affair and you keep out of it. Well, no copper's gonna bulldoze me and insult my friend. You'll get out of here while the going is good. Oh, is that so? Yes, uh, that oh, might get oh, them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get the kid. See you, Nun. Come on, and get me. I'm glad you didn't tip off, Danny. That kid means a lot to me. If your daddy doesn't double cross Chip, you needn't worry about me. Why, Billy almost had a fight. So you leave it to me. I'll get her. Come on down, Joanny. Oh, now let me get her. Oh, if your friends are on the level, as you say they are, I'll guarantee they'll have nothing to fear from Danny McGann or me. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Chick. I'm so glad you came up, Chick. Father has a little matter that I want settled right away. Why, what's on your mind, Mr. Manning? Hmm? You've got a hell of a n coming in here. They think you're mixed up in the O'Brien case. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you're on the wrong lead, Mr. Manning. Yeah? Yeah. I never carry a gun. Unless the police plant one on me, as they did the last time. Where were you last Friday night, Williams? Friday night? Now, let me see. Where was I last Friday night? I was at the National Theater. Yeah? Well, you'll have to prove that to me. I think I can. What?
What have these got to do with it? The warehouse robbery was at 10 o'clock Friday evening. And at that time, Daisy, Mr. Bachman, Chick, and I were at the National Theater together. What are you doing out in public with this jailbird? Answer me. He's my husband. We were married this morning. You let her marry you? Why, yes, sir. Copper. Oh, that's all right, Joe. That's the only kind of stuff they know. Get your things. She's not going with you, understand? She's my wife. She's my daughter. That was kind of rotten of you, Chick. Marrying her like you did. Yeah? Well, you would think so, Tommy. You see, I beat you to it. Now, you get out of here. All right, Governor. Well, I want to tell you something, Mr. Manning. Joan's my wife. And you can't take her away from me. Even if you are a cop. Get out! Well, what are you going to do? Well, she's... Married to him, ain't he? You ain't gonna let him get away with it, are you? They've got a perfect alibi. Then I'll make her break it down. Go! Go! She's gone. Where are you going? I'm going to kill that dirty... Oh, pup. wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pete. Let me handle this, won't you? Well, how are you going to do it? Oh, I don't know, but... No theater. Come on.
Join Dallas Bar Navy, Hotel Benson. Send in Prof. Malone. Number nine, Mr. Davis. Hello. This is George Stanlaw's David. Linden speaking, Detective Bureau. One of my men will use the name of Morgan. We lay his call here. Okay, Tommy. Get in there. What is this, Tommy? I'm asleep over in Jersey City. They bust into my room and bump me on the beach. And I'm here. Say, I didn't wave extradition. It's unconstitutional, and I want a mouthpiece. A mouthpiece? A lawyer. A lawyer. You need an understanding. Your gun saw? No. They put it in their pocket. Sit down, Saw. Me? Sure. Oh, you're driving away from the warehouse Friday night, just after O'Brien was shot. Oh, no, Calvary, no. I was at the National Theater Friday night. Yeah? Yeah. You ever know what happened to Gimpy Jackson after he killed a cop? He just disappeared. Oh, say, listen, Tommy. Listen, I... I wouldn't crook nobody. Honest, I wouldn't. Not even a cop. That's tough. Seeing that you've been elected to take the rap for murder. <laughs>
America. Take up that gun. Take it. Now put it on the desk. How'd you like to be buried next to Gimpy Jackson, Saw? You can't pull that stuff on me. I got an alibi. You I have... won't we'll need it. You're going to escape through that window. In your escape, you grab this gun. Your fingerprints are on it. You take a shot at Pete. But you miss. Pete shoots back in self defense, but Pete don't miss. Get me? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, Tommy. It's murder. It's murder. Why did you kill O'Brien? I didn't. Who did? I don't know. Who killed O'Brien? I don't know. Who killed O'Brien? I don't know. Who killed O'Brien? I don't Who know. Killed I tell you. Who killed O'Brien? Who killed O'Brien? Who killed O'Brien? Get me for squealing. And we'll get you a dead out. I'm afraid. I does not That's your shot at me. Now let him have it. No, no. No, 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 Tommy, please. Please tell me I'll tell. I'll tell. All right. I'll tell. Come on, I'll tell. Come on. It was. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Who was it? It was. Come on. Tell us. Get it out now. Who was it? Tell us. William. You're a liar. No, no. I'll give it to you straight, Tommy. It was Chicka. Then Buck Button gave us all tickets to the theater. Take it down, Pete. We were the first in the mission. We went out of the warehouse. Brian showed up. Chick shot him. And we went back to the theater. Chick told me to get out of town.
I've got to have an alibi for Friday night. What's wrong? Why? What's the matter? Soft Malone's been pinched. Wait a minute. You leave this room when I tell you to. Now, I've got to find someone respectable who'll swear I spoke to him on the phone for about five minutes. Come on, Buck, think. The deacon. He's always a grand. Oh, I said respectable. your hair. How's Billy Morgan, the boy broker tonight? Huh? Red hot. Billy? I wonder if you do kick and me a little favor. What is it? You see, the cops are working a frame up on Chick. Now he's got to find someone whose word the police will take. Someone we can depend upon. See, I've got a perfect alibi except for about five minutes. And we want you to swear that Chick Williams telephoned you last Friday night about ten and talked to you for five minutes. Well, what do we talk about? <laughs> Why, we talked about me, getting married. Yeah, sure. And he wanted you for his best man. <laughs> Wish I his best man? Sure. Will you do it? He'll do it. Hmm. Certainly I'll do it. I'm always glad to do a favor for my friends. Excuse me. I didn't see you. Are you going? 
well. Well, I, I got a, I got a date with a couple of Wall Street guys. We're gonna plaster the town plenty. Yeah? But I wouldn't go if I were you. You see, well, we might need you any minute. Why not ask your friends to come over here? Why, sure. This place needs a little bearing. It's a great idea. I'll get him. Wait a minute. I'll do that for you. What's the number? Uh, it's, um, uh, Melrose, two, one, hundred. Give me Melrose, two, one, hundred. Yeah. Uh, my, my friends are stopping at the Vincent Hotel. <clears throat> What do I ask for? George Salmon of Avon. <clears throat> Who? George Stanislaus David. Hello. Give me Mr. George Stanislaus David. Yeah. I don't like his middle name. Neither do I. <laughs> Hello, Mr. David. Yeah? Well, I'm speaking for a friend of yours, Billy Morgan. Yes. He wants you to come over to Buck Backman's place at... Oh, you know where it is, huh? Tell him, tell him to bring all the boys. <laughs> he says to come over right away and bring all the boys with you. Tell them the boys will be right over. And don't stall, because there's going to be plenty doing. <laughs> he says there's going to be plenty doing. <laughs> All right. They'll be over in about 12 minutes. Smart fella. Get me Glennon, the detective bureau. Make it quick for me. Winter, 4100. Say, Lammy Chop, do we dance or don't we? Sure, go ahead and dance. <laughs> All right, Cookie. Joan's outside. Why didn't you bring her here for? Oh, well, I tried to call her, but she would come. You're getting dumber all the time. Don't you call me dumb, you big bum. I wouldn't if I could think of anything worse. Why, you were... <laughs> um, um, well... What were you saying, sweetheart? No, I'll tell you later, darling. I couldn't stand it any longer, Chick. Why didn't you call me? Oh, I'm sorry to worry you, darling, but you see... Well... The police are trying to get me for the warehouse killing. Well, they can't do that. You were with us Friday night. Sure he was. Yes, but... Oh, well, leave it to the cops. they got to pinch someone. <laughs> now, there's not a thing to worry about, dear, really. You see, I've just located the chap I spoke to on the phone Friday night. And to think, we were looking everywhere for Billy Morgan. And all the time, he was right here. Billy Morgan? Yes. Yes, the boy that was at the house today. You mean it was Billy Morgan who phoned to Friday night? 
Why, certainly, dear. Why? See if everything's all right. I'll go right out again. Mr. Morgan. Dick tells me that he phoned you Friday night at 10 o'clock. Is that right? Certainly. That's right. You'll swear to that? <laughs> Why are you acting so funny, dear? Why, you don't think he'd lie for me, do you? No, I don't think he'd lie for you. If I bring Tommy Glennon over here, will you swear the chip phone you Friday night? You just bring him over and see. All right, I'll get him right away. Oh, wait a minute, Joan. I wouldn't call Tommy, really. I... I... Winter, 4-100. Hello, police headquarters. Detective Sergeant Glennon, please. Oh. Harry left a few minutes ago. That's too bad. Well, if you should get Mr. Glennon late. I'll be right here. I think I know where I can reach Tommy. Melrose, two one hundred. Oh. Mr. George Stanilor David, please. This is a plan to please have to get in touch with each other in order to avoid suspicion. Hello, Mr. David. This is Joan Manning. It's very important that I get a hold of Tommy Glennon. Oh. Oh, all right, thank you. He received a rush call from one of his men, and I won't be able to get in touch with him until he calls in again. I think I know how to get hold of Glennon. If you only could. Take Daisy and Joan over to your roof bungalow. Wait there for me. Sure. You know how coppers feel about coming around this joint. Sure. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Now, darling, I'll keep Morgan with me until I locate Glennon. Are you sure you can get Tommy? Mm. You leave it to me. I'll get a taxi at the corner. We'll be over in about half an hour, dear. Come on, dearie. It means so much to me to have you bring Tommy and Morgan together. Don't I know it? Well, come on, Joan. You know, I, I know it's so important. What are you going to do? Don't you let her out of your sight until I get there. We've got to make Montreal tonight. Be careful. Get out. Oh, is it? Tell Mr. Morgan that a lady wants to see him in here. Alone. Yes. 
Morgan Supply Cop. What? What? What are you going to do? What do you think we're going to do? I'll be back in two minutes. If I'm not, you come and get me, Cookie. gun. Put yours on the table. Get away from it. Now then, you two-fisted, double-barreled he-man, give me your gun. You're a great little guy, ain't you? When it comes to shooting in the back. I never give a copper an even break. Leave him alone, you dirty stiff. Go. Get an ambulance. Winner, 4100. Yes, and make it PDQ, sister. Can you imagine, Tommy? Say it on to me. I ought to be pounding the beast. I'm a bum detective. No, you're not, Danny. I'll get him. I swear I will. 
Saving for me. Um, hard to see anything in here. I ain't a regular cop. I just belong to the glee club. Goodbye, Pete. Goodbye, Tommy. Tell mother and all the boys goodbye. Ready. Get the dirty yellow rat. Watch your step, Tommy. Watch it. Sure you'll get him. I'll get him, Danny boy. No help me. Easy. Take it easy. It's all part of the job, my boy.
I told you to keep away from that window. Say, outside of love, what else did anyone ever call you? Pack those bags. I'll tell you again. Pack those bags. nothing for me. You gave them up because you're just a natural born bum. Oh, How can you talk to me that way after all I've done for you? Shut up or I'll give you a suck in the nose. Oh, you will, will you? All right. Go on. Hit me. Hit me. I got you to. Go on. Uh, <laughs> I'll fix them, dearie. Don't you think it'd be all right if I telephoned Chick to find out if he got a hold of Tommy? Oh, no, no. I wouldn't do that. See, he may have had more trouble locating Tommy than he thought he would. Everything's going to be all right. When I tell you to do something, I want it done. Give me Melrose, 4412, please. Hello? Hello? Backman? Is Mr. Williams there? Who wants to speak to him? This is Mrs. Williams. Find out where she is. Where are you now? At Mr. Backman's bungalow on top of the Trent building. Hello? 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 Get away from that phone. Trying to get you at Bathman. What do you mean, letting her use that phone? I ought to break your neck. Oh, please. Don't talk about it. Do it. You're a fine pair to be mixed up with. A bum fence and a dizzy dame. Are you going to stand there and let him call me dizzy? Go on, do something. See here, chick. Ah, get, get away! away. Now, you pack your things, and we'll get out of here. Oh, darling, did he hurt you? Oh. Oh, you big brute. Oh, baby, can I do something for you? Yes, keep away from me. I hope he kills you. Well, why don't you do what I say? What are you standing there for? I'm not going to leave here until you tell me why you didn't bring Tommy and Morgan as you promised. I'll tell you nothing. Now, you're my wife and you'll do as I say. I'll never be your wife until you prove to the police that you're on the level. The police, eh? What do I care about them? I hate their guts. Now, you get this. I killed O'Brien.
And you're going through for me. I'm a crook and you're a crook's wife. Maybe it's the police. Now you keep your mouth shut. That's Glennon. I'll get him first. It's a holdup. Take that door, Pete. Look in there, Trask. Look behind those curtains. Come here. Sure. Turn around. Sure. Get over there. Sure. Sit down. Sure. So he's in there. No. You're making it tough for me, loving that rat so much. It isn't that, Tommy. Honest, it isn't. Oh, you needn't be afraid he'll shoot me. My back isn't turned. He will, I know he will. He said it. He did, eh? Take her, Pete. Come out, William. Take them all out. Come on. Sure. Now see, you don't try anything funny. Oh, he won't. Get that chair and smoke them out. All right, let him have it. hands up and bring them out first. Never mind the mess. Better not take any chances. Leave them to me. Wait out there. Now sit down. Sullivan. What are you going to do about Joe? That's my affair. Not any lousy cop. Lousy cop. That's it. And you're the hero, the glorified crook who shoots in the back. Now that's Danny's son. He was a funny sort of a kid. Never kept it loaded for fear he might kill someone. Well, what's that got to do with me? Nothing. Only I've loaded it, and now take a good look at it. 
Ah, how did I know he was a cop? He pulled a gat, and I thought he was trying to hold up Backman's place. So that's your defense, is it? Yes, and I can prove it. <laughs> Come on, take me down. I'm not going to take you anywhere. What do you mean? When Danny McGann died in my arms, I promised him I'd get you. Why, you... What are you driving at? You mean you're going to croak me? You're not going to give me a chance? Sure. The same chance that you gave Danny. I'm going to shoot you right in the back. Oh, now, now listen, Tommy, that's murder, don't you see? Why, why, you couldn't get away with that. Even if you are a cop. And I, I'll show you whether I can or not. Now take a look in the barrel of this gun if you can without popping a tonsil. Don't, Tommy, please. Listen. Lock me up. Lock me up, Tommy. Send me to the chair. Do anything you want, only don't shoot me. That's the only way I'm going to do, William. Oh. Open the door. Open the door. He's going to kill me. Open it. Don't, Tommy. You know you don't. There's only one way out. Oh, please pity me, Tommy. I can't die. I'm not ready to die. And they call you the gun. No, I'm not, Tommy. Um, I'm not, not. Turn around. No, no. Take it like you've given it. I'll do anything you say. I'll give up, Joan. Honest, I will. Anything you say. Oh, no, Tommy, no, don't, please. Come on, killer. It'll be all over in a minute. Oh, no, Tommy, don't. Please don't. Shot him? I knew the rat that shot O'Brien and Danny was yellow. What did he do? Try to get away? Throw some water on him. Water? He's not dead. Just fainted. I shot him with a couple of blanks. Blanks? So you're fainted. Ain't that too bad. Oh, what's the matter? Did big bad policemen frighten Mama's little killer to death? Come on. Get up there. Sit down. <laughs> Tommy, can you imagine the headlines? <laughs> Sheep bandit shy to death. <laughs> All the wagon. Say, sister, get me winter for one hundred. Why did you come in? And he's even. 
Shall I get the wagon? We'll be going. <laughs> 